the 19th of June 2001, Imperial College launched a new educational initiative, the Imperial College eMasterclass. This first masterclass was broadcast to both ministers and colleagues in Australia and Thailand who have not only made financial contributions in helping to ensure a virtual centre in both the University of New South Wales in Australia and Mahanakon University in Thailand, but they have been pivotal in really trying to ensure that the technology and the people and the educational aspects of this scheme were in place. The first E-Master was Sir Richard Sykes, Rector of Imperial College. I believe a significant advancement will come from our ability to merge human tissue and microelectronic devices. As an example, I show here one such application which will soon be tested in humans. And this is the ability to replace a, a defective cochlea with a microchip and thus return hearing to someone who perhaps... So, so in a nutshell, the e Masterclass can be defined as the global dissemination of information and knowledge between some of the best brains in the world in, in a global interactive kind of environment. And um, the technology is available now to allow us to do that. The future is full of promise based, of course, on the exciting developments in biology, engineering and computer science. There will not be a true realisation of the benefits unless there is a major change in the way that we deliver this healthcare. And if there is no change, money will be wasted and benefits will be denied. If this does not happen, then certainly we will not uh, really benefit from all the tremendous science and technology that we have access to today and which I believe will create a better world in which to live. Thank you. Imperial College is the place to launch this kind of concept because we see ourselves as being you know, one of the best universities in Europe. We have some of the best brains in the world but they're very busy, they can't travel, they need to be here. I'm sure that all of us here have many questions to ask, but I would like to begin by asking the Vice-Chancellor, Sir John Nyland, that he would like to, uh, to ask a question on Sir Richard. I'm wondering whether you have any observations on whether or not the choice goes or the difficulties goes, go beyond just simply how do we spend the healthcare dollar, and rather they are cast into uh, more the form how does the healthcare dollar uh, outmatch the education dollar and vice versa. Well, thank you, John. It's certainly uh, a question that you pose that we could have a whole master class on. If there are two things that people think about every day in their lives, it's, it's health and education. The e master class responds to the human desire for people to communicate with people and not machines. You can't replace the lecture with a CD-ROM or a videotape. And so I see the future being very much technology becoming more and more non-obtrusive and people beginning to interact more with people at a distance and as a result we will look at new strategies in businesses, we will look at new concepts, we may be able to invent things interactively. Um, so it's the real-time interaction resulting in strategies, businesses, inventions, challenges, brainstorming, future directions, as well as even technology investments. It's for people who are very, very busy, but they want that back-of-the-envelope design. They can't travel thousands of miles for that back-of-the-envelope design. So that's, I guess, one of the examples of where the masterclass will flourish. I have a very simple question. In this medical revolution, what do you think is the most important change in the role of drug companies you'd like to see? I, I think it's obvious. I, I, I think, again, it's all about knowledge, you see. If you think about the, the pharmaceutical industry, it worked on serendipity. Antibiotics were discovered by pure serendipitous events. The feedback from this e-masterclass, both locally and internationally, was excellent because it really did demonstrate that the technology wasn't in the way. People did feel 
that the interactiveness was there and that the lecture was the most important part of the day, not the technology. I thought that it was absolutely excellent. The technology worked like a charm. We live in a world where there's lots of screens, lots of paraphernalia, but just occasionally I was struck by the fact that we were talking to about half of the Thai cabinet and there are people over there in Sydney and I thought it was really profound, I thought it was a really interesting experience. And the most appealing about the whole experience was just seeing how different groups in different cultures and different time zones and under different governments and different social constructs were also reacting to what he had to say and when you looked at the question and answer session they were very, very um, context and culturally, culturally divergent. The, the exchange of ideas, that it wasn't like watching a television programme, but then people interjected and there was a, an interplay of ideas going backwards and forwards. This also struck me very much. I have only done a few video conferences, so I haven't got massive points of comparison, but um, essentially I thought it was excellent and that idea of telepresence and all that seemed very um, much there and the extraordinary ability to be able to talk to people right across the world. That was amazing. I think from the very beginning one was conscious of the fact that here we are in, in literally three different parts of the world separated by you know, thousands of kilometres that, 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 and, and this was quite special. I felt at least that we, we were in the same room, almost anyway. I was uh, quite amazed with the clarity of the picture, uh, the way that the, the, the picture came across, uh, the animation. Uh, I thought it was real time and, and that's unusual for video conferencing. When the interaction kicked in and we started drawing graphs and things like that, you suddenly began to see the possibilities. During the discussion, you know, normally when you draw something on the whiteboard, it's not very clear, but this technology allowed me to see it rather clearly. The huge potential of today was the fact that healthcare experts in, in many parts of the world can actually get together and swap ideas. It's potentially enormous. We've talked about all sorts of themes that run through our mission and our values, like conveying science to communities, like global learning, um, the, the idea of continuous professional learning, learning outside, lifetime learning, learning outside your degree course and so on. And whether the masterclass is actually a two-hour presentation or actually an ongoing program of seminars is almost irrelevant. It's just that they will be able to interact with the very best people available in the world. Yeah.